my friend was in uh, one of the Latino countries, Guatemala or Honduras or something, and he was with his friends, and they people started running away from, they thought maybe something over there was dead or something had happened, so he runs to it. And that's the other thing, you've got to learn to run to the battle and the things that people fear instead of running away, run to it because you're the answer. When he got there, there was a young man there that was dying on the side of the road, not breathing, eyes closed. They tried to move him off the road. They don't know whether he got hit, what had happened, but his life was draining out of him. He was in a downward spiral. I mentor with him, so his first thought was, I'll call the prophet. I was driving, so I didn't answer the call, answer the phone. I thought, I'll just pull over, I'm going to be there in a second, and then I'll call him back. Well, in that few moments of time, he had to decide, this man's dying. What am I going to do? I can't get the prophet, so now what? So he lays hands on him. He commands life, and he resurrects his first dead. I have never resurrected the dead before. I wanted to. But I always short circuit the process. Some man was dying in the parking lot one time. Oh, but let me finish that. So I saw the man's spirit spiraling down in death. When he laid hands on him, it stopped the process, reversed it, and he came wow. back up into life. The man opens his eyes like, who are you and what just happened to me? First successful raising of the dead. I went to try to do it years ago. Because I was telling God, I've never raised the dead. I want to do every miracle that's in the Bible. There's a man stretched out in the parking lot. Shorts on. It was a cold day. He's gray-blue. Purple lips. So I'm thinking, yes, he's almost dead. <laughs> this is my day to raise the dead. Happy day for me. Raise the dead. Yay! Yay! I grab the anointing oil. I push my way through the crowd. I get to him. He's not dead yet. You know, you're that Monty Python. Oh, no quite dead yet. Well, you're mostly dead. Well, if a person is mostly dead but not dead and you did not raise them from the dead, you raised them from the mostly dead. <laughs> Raising the dead 101, let them die. <laughs> Otherwise, you have no testimony. It's an almost resurrection. Does not count. So I jump in there, the guy's still breathing, he's, you know, he's still got color and life in him, he's still warm, he wasn't stiff, no rigor mortis, you know, so he wasn't, a, a, what do you call that, a cadaver? So I put my little electrodes on his head, slap some oil on his head, I start praying in tongues, commanding the life, I bind you, spirit of death, I cast you off of him, I command life into his body, blah, blah, blah. Well, the man gets up. He's healed. He's pink and rosy. He's happy. I'm mad as a hornet. Who are you? What's your name? Where'd you come from? Do you have a business card? Oh, just leave me alone, all right? I'm over it. Because I had realized that had been my divine appointment to raise the dead, and I blew it. And I'm thinking, how could you have done that, Barbie? Why do you always just rush in our angel spirit to tread if you had given the guy a few more minutes of private time? <laughs> His color was fading out. I mean, it was, it was almost... Oh, he was almost ready. He was mostly dead. And I, I blew it. So I, I promised myself I would never do that again, I will wait until there's no life in them. So I go to a hotel. I'm checking in, and I think it was like a Hyatt or some nice hotel. And some little old lady comes running across the counter, or the, not the counter, the lobby. Mm -hmm. My husband, my husband just had a heart attack. He's, he's dying in the elevator. <laughs> Love me, God. Thank you so much. So I'm thinking, okay, I have another opportunity. I go, I'll be back in a minute. I need to go check on this. So I clip across the lobby, get to the elevator. Sure enough, the guy's down. His color's ashy. You know, he's looking really bad. And there's some guy in there with a 
a turquoise like golf shirt on and I think he was like a paramedic off duty and he's asking all these questions so did you have your breakfast this morning did you have your pills what kind of medications are you on blah 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 blah. I'm thinking really the guy's dying so I bump my way in there boom <laughs> squat down and he goes excuse me ma'am what are you doing I said I'll be I'll be done in just a few minutes I just gotta lay hands on this man and, and I bump this guy out of the way, lay hands on him, speak life to him, resurrecting back, and I'm thinking, Dad, come it. I did it again. <laughs> he was not dead, he was only mostly dead. And I had to wrestle the paramedic just to get my hands on him. And I thought, if I hadn't been so rude, the Bible calls it bold, he would have probably died. Because the guy was asking him about his temperature and his pulse and his, did you take a medicine and did you, I'm thinking, get with that. We get to raise the dead. We get to do exciting things. Yeah. And even the almost dead. They are kind of count. They're, they count as practice. The Bible tells us that we have to use the gifts until we perfect them. So that was practice one, fail. Yeah. Practice two, fail. So someday, see I came from a Presbyterian church. We had, we were called the frozen chosen and the mostly dead. <laughs> you couldn't tell, there was never any response in the audience. It was just <laughs> I would go to the back of the church because there was a wall. Because you know how you do the head drop and it hurts your neck, he snaps and it's like pulls that tendon off the back of your skull. So when you're, you know, you're trying to stay awake and you're bored with tears and your eyes are crossing and everything, you think you're going into the vision realm and it really is slumber. The spirit of slumber has latched on you. It came on you the minute you walked into church. And you're thinking, oh, it's so, I'm so tired. I had sloping weeks. <laughs> We get to the back row, I would stick my head on the wall because that way I didn't do the head snap. Right, right. And I didn't fight, you know, I just went into sleep. I thought, okay, I'll catch up because I was out late that night. <laughs> Saturday night, you know, you gotta go out on the town. Yeah. Sunday morning, you catch up on your sleep at church. <laughs> so I'd be on the back row and my jaw would drop. And you know, when your jaw drops, now you're really snoring. Yeah. And slobber yeah. comes down, and you wake up, you got this drool, and you think, oh, that's just anointing. But that's where I was raised, and then we would sneak out and go get pizza, because when I came into the church, they handed me a brochure that told me everything that was going to happen, yeah. which verse was going to be read, I knew which stanzas we were going to sing, and which ones were not godly, and we were going to skip them. We're gonna sing first and third stanza. All rise. <laughs> and you'd hold your hymn on, you'd read it and sing it. And, and then if you got spiritual and you raised your hands more than half mass, the deacons came and they would form a ring around you and they'd tap you on the shoulder. Now, 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 the Bible says everything decently and in order. Because if you did this, <laughs> That was it, you were out. Wow. So half mass was okay, but that was a warning. But if you really felt the spirit, you were out. Wow. Yeah. But in that, I remember going to the, leaving the church one afternoon, I asked the pastor, I said, you know, pastor, when are we gonna do the stuff? He said, what stuff are you talking about? I said, you know, the Bible says that they raise the dead, they heal the sick, blind eyes open, deaf ears. And I saw all these little old ladies with their pink, blue, and red, green hair. They had a hearing aid, so I knew they couldn't hear a thing he was saying. They'd turn them off. you hear this little ee. That's a dead giveaway. The hearing aid's off. They ain't listening. I mean, but if we could have a healing service where we can cast out all the deaf spirits, I saw Ernest Ainsley doing that when I was growing up. Y'all know Ernest? Okay, when I was in Georgia, Ernest, I was going to a Methodist church there, and they'd meet out on the veranda during the break for cigar break, the elders and the pastor, and they would teach out of the um, 
Reader's Digest. And so that was the church I was attending after college in Georgia. And so I would go home and watch Ernest Ainsley, and he was a faith healer. And he would uh, heal people of deafness. And he'd say, you deaf, you foul, deaf and dumb spirit. Uh, I tell you, in the name of Jesus, you come out of those ears uh, right now. In Jesus' name, come out. Uh, and he would stick his wet feet wet. And he'd stick his wet fingers in someone's ears. And he'd go, come out. I'd be saying, devil, get out of my ears he, before he sticks them slimy, slimy fingers in my ears. I ain't, get out of me now. He'd stick them in and he'd go, come out. And then he'd go like this. He'd click. He'd say, say, baby, back, baby, back, baby, baby, baby. He said, there, you're healed. Now go praise him in Jesus' name. Send me the next one. Come here, honey. Can you hear what I'm saying? Oh, come out of her, you deaf and dumb spirit. That's how I learned to heal deaf people. So, after the service, if you ain't hearing me, I'm gonna, I'm gonna lay it on you. And I'm gonna cause that thing to come out of you. Lisa, come out to her. You gotta say it right. Because half of it, that's half of the how you say it that scares the demons. It scares them right out of them. I'm telling you. So I learned how to do that. So I was asking my pastor in the Presbyterian church, how come we don't do that stuff like Ernest, you know? And he said, well, honey, that stuff stopped when the apostles died. And so I was so upset. I thought, how come those guys, they got ugly old beards? And you know, what about me? Why can't I be an apostle? Why can't I do that stuff? No, no, no. They, well, they don't do that anymore. We have the Bible. So will you be happy? Go home and read your Bible. I'm sorry, I am reading the Bible. That's why I'm asking you, when are we going to do the stuff that the Bible says? And so I was out riding my horse, upset. God, why in the world do you make us go to church and suffer through those dry burning right. services? Exactly. That's torture. Yeah. And then you don't even heal anymore. You don't do miracles anymore. And you, oh, you love them more than you love us now. What happened? Yes. And yeah. he said, well, I thought it was the horse said, honestly. <laughs> I heard the horse go, Barbara. <laughs> and I'm like, what? I was so excited because there was a show called Mr. Ed the Talking yeah, Horse. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was one of the few I could watch. I watched Soul Train if I got my work done. Yeah. And this white woman can bust a move. <laughs> I'm just saying. I might not have rhythm, but I sure had passion. <laughs> Soul Train, Pink Panther, and Mr. Ed. So now that horse is calling my name. And I'm so excited. And I think this is it. I'm going on TV. I'm traveling with my horse. And I'm watching his mouth. And I hear my name again, Barbie. And this time the horse wasn't talking. But somebody was. And I'm thinking, okay, who's out here? And then the voice of God kept talking. Barbie. I don't change. I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. He said, if you will only believe the same anointing that flowed through the apostles of old will flow through you. Wow. I'm a kid on a horse. God of the universe is talking audibly. Because I was so upset at the church, I was walking away. And God says, don't do that. I am the same. I don't change. And so God is saying that to us. We are in the best times. We are in the best of times. Where God has saved the best for last. Yes. And he's wanting us to begin to loose it here yes. on the earth. Yes. And so when we can enter into the heart of God, we gain the wisdom that is necessary to accomplish the impossible dream. Mm -hmm. You might think what God has called you to is impossible, but it's not. He is there with you every step of the way. 
You have a special place in my father's heart. Come and experience the full inheritance of the kingdom realm that has been destined for you from before the foundation of the world, Matthew 25, 34. In the father's heart, he's not only in you, but you are also in the father's heart. You're better than John who had his head laying on Jesus' chest. You are inside the father's heart. He doesn't just hold you in the palm of his hand. He has placed you in his heart. And that's where he keeps you. You're precious. And you have access to everything and anything that you need, want, or desire. Being a born again, we are awakened to discern Christ in us. The hope of obtaining glory. Glory is in us. Last night, I was, he woke me up at about 4 o'clock. And I'm going to close with this. And then I'm going to do a question and answer session with you. And I also want to lay hands on you. Except for those that left. Don't lock the doors, please. <laughs> But I, he was talking to me. I, you know what he's saying? Don't share that yet. I'm sorry. I hate that when people do that. But I have to be obedient. He said he wants to develop it more, so I'm not going to share. I will at some point, but not probably here. Um, so what I'd like to do is if you will all just line up across the front, I want to lay hands on you. And then I want us to have a question and answer session. And so... Um, I, I ask probably that you don't share a dream. Um, you can put them on my website. The questions, you know, that you might have, clarity you need or an encounter you had or something, but short and brief because there are a lot of us. And so we want to make, uh, be available. And I'm going to ask, um, come, come, come. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. You don't need to fall down to receive. Um, if, you, if you're a faller, please just sit on the front row <laughs> because we don't have catchers. <laughs> you know? I'm just going to go by and impart, lay hands on, activate, and I'm not going to prophesy and saying all this. So it's just going to be a point of contact. This is just a point of contact for your faith to come up to the next level. Okay? So you have, you're asking Holy Spirit, not Barbie Breath. You're asking Holy Spirit, when she touches me, I want you to do this. I want you to give me this. Do that. Open this. Solve that. Give me wisdom. Give me healing. What miracle. Activate a gift. All of you are going to want something different. But have that in mind, and then you just know at the point of contact, boom, it happens. That's been released to you. Okay? So, Father, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for the realm of glory. I thank you for increased multiplication. I thank you for power. I thank you for anointing. I thank you for miracles. I thank you for revelation knowledge, for angelic encounters. I thank you, Lord, that you are moving in the winds of the Spirit that you are breaking through and bringing multiplication. Lord, I thank you for keys that break us into the next level. I thank you for boldness and power and authority that you have granted unto us already. So Lord, I speak to the gateways now in the realm of the Spirit, and I command you open, and you release the petitions that are coming forth that have been decreed and declared within their heart, and that they are released to them now in Jesus' mighty name. Amen, amen, amen.
Thanksgiving. In Jesus' name, I lose it now. Got one. No, just touch it. Make sure. Go ahead and line up two and three deep so that we Stop don't it. have lag time. We just yeah. want to go as fast as we can, get as much done in a short time. Is that for them or you? Yes. Okay. So I want to get a full understanding of this before I start utilizing it. It's really that simple. So if somebody who I've had difficulty with, before I go up to them, I can look at them and say, okay, today I want you to be a kind, God fearing, person in my presence and you will be humble, you will be kind to me and that's going to be the extent of it. I wish it was that easy. In your prayer you have to begin to see them so you're spending time because if if I had something against you, I think, oh there she is again. I've already made a prejudice against you. I have to clean my heart. I have to repent and say the way I feel about you, okay, I'm gonna love her. God, give me love for her. Love is the change agent. He first loved us. So he opened the door for us then to change, to be born again and saved. So we act like he did. I love you, I forgive you. I see, oh, she's beautiful. She's not who I thought she was. Lord, thank you that she is my, and so I'm doing this in my prayer closet. I am opening a gate and a door for something new so that she and I can take the chains of my prejudice off, my limitations of what I formed around her or you. So now I've set you free. You can now grow, blossom, and you're not going to, when you come around, our spirit man discerns. And so she might not say something to me, but my spirit might go, oh, she really doesn't like me. And now I respond to her that way. Right. She's never said, Barbie, I hate your guts, and blah, 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 but my spirit man picks up on it. Mm -hmm. So we are able to discern things by the spirit. But if in my closet I'm saying, no, no more am I gonna do that, I repent of that. I really love that person. I let God break my heart for them, and I set them free, then they can change. Wow. Okay, so when I get that nudge from the spirit man, that I hear that, okay, I love that person. Yeah. And walk away. Yeah, walk away. I love you. I love you. Yeah, I love you. Thank you, Lord, that you're giving me love. And I see them changing. I see them changing. I don't want them to always be a hateful, mean, short-tempered. Lord, deliver them. Because he said he loved his enemies. Yeah. See, it's easy to love somebody who's sweet and kind and gives us presents and does nice things for us. But the enemies, they perfect us. Come on. Because That's now good. I have to relate to them differently in order for me to come up higher. Otherwise, I drop to their level and I relate to them as an enemy hate upon hate. Mm -hmm. I have to learn how to love when they hate, yeah. love when they reject, love when they cut my throat. Because yeah. love is the greatest power. Okay. If I can love them no matter what, I don't have to become a doormat. Mm -hmm. I don't take abuse. But I, my response is not, you dog. It's, I love you. I'm praying God change you. And I might never say that to them, but I'm saying it to the lover of my soul, and I'm saying, God, please, you overshadow them. You change them. Yeah. I'm going to stand in the gap. Even though I don't like them, you give me love for them. Help me love them so they can change. Yeah. 
Yeah. We become the change agent. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, my question is, I see houses, all shapes, forms, except the fact that I don't see modern houses. They're like in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. And I've been seeing them for a while. I can just close my eyes, or I'm just doing something, and I see houses. So I want to know what that means. I asked the Lord, but I don't feel I've gotten any answer. If you, if God came to you and he said, sweetheart, you can have any house you want. Are you going to say, oh, please give me one in the 1950s, 1960s? No. no. That's not what you want. Right. So I would say, God, upgrade me. Give me a vision for the future. Give me a vision for the now. Take me out of the past. Okay. Somehow you got locked in the 50s, 60s, okay. and you've got to take a quantum leap into 22. So you've got all that time to make up because your vision is stuck in the 50s and 60s. Houses represent people, mansions, a place of living and dwelling. Yeah. So you are dwelling in the 50s and 60s, and we're in 22. Wow. Okay. So God, quantum leap me. Move me out of the past into my now. Faith is now. now. Okay. So if we dwell in the past, you'll get the same cycle of the past, and it keeps you locked there. God doesn't want you in the past. He came to deliver you into your present now and into a future hope. Okay. So you put your hope in Christ and let him move you into the now and then move you on into the future. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Um, my pastors, they imparted on me because I asked them, that, Father, I want more. And um, I had a little anger and bitterness because I felt like my inheritance locked, not only in Father, but I know that he's created me for mighty things. Um, my question is, is, sometimes I don't know how to pray for me to get it out. And then when I pray, yes, Father, thank you for the land, the miracles, and all this, because there's nothing that I can't do, because he's saying I want it. And sometimes I feel like hesitant, so. Do you, are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I am. All right, so I pray in tongues, because that way you're always praying in the perfect will. Okay. And say, Lord, I'm praying for myself to get into my destiny. Yep. And then you pray in tongues. Wherever you're going, hours a day, you're driving in your car, pray in tongues. Walking, praying in tongues. Washing clothes, praying in tongues. Okay. Pray in tongues, pray in tongues. That builds up your spirit, man, and it breaks any limitation that makes you fat in the realm of the spirit. That breaks every yoke that would try to hold you back. Okay? And it make where are you going? She's like, Are you done yet? <laughs> I'm trying to talk fast. You figure you're trying to leave. <laughs> your shoulders carry an anointing. The keys of the kingdom are on the shoulder, but there's a yokes that come onto the shoulder. So when you pray in the spirit, it makes you fat. And it breaks off the yokes that are said this far and no more. So as you pray in the spirit, you get so fat or big and strong, hefty, that the yoke that's been placed on you by man breaks off. In God, there is no limitation. Liberty is in God. So you have perfect liberty, and he's already given you the yes and amen. So as you pray in the most Holy Ghost and the Spirit, you build yourself up. He'll cause people to come across your path. That's your first target. Finally, were you here yesterday when I talked about the lady in Walmart or Home Depot? Go get the New Jerseyites that are in pain. Start doing it in the marketplace. I do. Perfect. Keep it up. Thank you, Lord. Earlier you mentioned the rooms that we have access to. How do we access those in the glory? Yeah. Keys of the kingdom, fruits of the spirit, gifts of the spirit, moving into faith. And a lot of times the dream realm will bring you into those places. He said, you know the way to get there. He is spirit. He is truth. So as you move in the spirit of truth and you operate in the faith and in the gifts, you move from one low level to a high level. Thomas said, I don't know. He said, yes, you do know. So, Father, whatever I don't know, you know all things. We cast all of our care upon him, for he knows. We follow whatever the word says, whatever the dream says. We have to activate and become doers of the word. 
if I get a negative picture, I cast it down because that's not God. I only allow myself to see what the Father's doing that I do in like manner. And so every day, what is my portion today? What step am I taking? What key am I using? And we go step by step. It's not something that's a one time. But when you see, he says, I want you to go to the conference here. You went. You were obedient. So you entered into a new mansion. You gained new keys. You have been changed and transformed. Why? Because you were in his presence. How are we changed? From glory to glory. In his presence. So every time we come into his presence, he shows us a picture. He gives us an image. We stay focused on that. We believe a prophetic word. He says, this is who you are. Yes, I agree. That's who I am. Because when the preceding word comes to us, he speaks over us. And we're changed instantaneously. We don't manifest it until we come into agreement with, with who God says we are. That's what a suddenly is. That's when an acceleration happens because the preceding word does a drive-by. He says, this is who you are, and he keeps going. So he doesn't stop at the road of Emmaus. He's still proceeding. We're stuck at the road of Emmaus because it got dark and we went in to eat. The preceding word goes. Then, when we agree with who he says we are, we're catapulted next to him. Accelerated. When and then you say you, agree, it's like actually say it with, like speak it out. You have to not just put words to it, put actions. Hearing, hearer of the word only, or a doer of the word. If he says I'm a prophet, then I need to study my prophetic gift and become a prophet. If he says, I'm an apostle, then I need to know how to be a master builder and to send people out. If he says, I'm a healer, then that means I need to study the healing gift and learn how to heal. Whatever he tells me I am, I must become that. So if he says it, I have to believe it. If I believe it, I'm going to study it and show myself approved uh, and become it. Uh, all this will be in the Imagine series, so this is a lot to unpack. I did a five book series on it to layer uh, one foundation after the other to take us from where we are to where God's taking us to. So grab that Imagine series. It'll answer most all of your questions and the ones that doesn't, make email me. And then we'll make number six. <laughs> so my question is, last night when you spoke about our angels being captured, um, I really felt in my spirit that my wealth angel has been captured. And so I'll, my question is, is there a certain time of day, or can you point me to some scriptures that I can research to find out what time of day to pray? At this point, I wouldn't have specifics on that. I would point you to the scripture that says, pray without ceasing. <laughs> I would say if my wealth angel was captured, I'd be on my knees, I'd be fasting. <laughs> I'm going to say, oh my gosh. Yeah, so pray without ceasing. And if God shows you a key, yeah. study the wealth. Look in there in the scripture. I give you the ability to create and to gather wealth. So there are angels of creativity as well. Mm -hmm. So angels that gather. So if the wealth angel has been captured, probably creativity has been captured. And gathering angels have been captured. Because that's what brings things to you. So you want to know what, you know, look at scripture. One scripture is going to lead you to another scripture to another scripture to unlock things. And so that's why it's beautiful to know the more word we know, the more authority we walk in, the more knowledge we have. And so I wouldn't, I haven't, I'm going to do an app someday, but at this point I would just say use the one that says without ceasing. Because <laughs> if well, especially praying in the spirit. You know, I find people going, excuse me, what'd you say? And because I'm shun dying and didn't know that I was, it's just so, it yeah. just comes out. So we can't find enough time to pray. So we walk in it. We practice the presence and God just downloads. So you find yourself at night dreaming and praying in the spirit. Just he's inhabiting and he's like, woo, I found one that likes it. Let's give them everything they've got. <laughs> All right. I'm going to turn it over.